Welcome to the reading of the Book of Psalms. Bienvenidos a la lectura de los Salmos. Good morning, my dear friends. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, are you glad that we're here today? I am. We are. I'm glad. I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad because we're Amen. eating good today with this psalm. I tell you, I haven't had breakfast and I'm so hungry, but I'm going to get full of the word today. This is a beautiful Amen. psalm. Amen. <laughs> Beautiful psalm. Yes, it will psalm. encourage you today. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Psalm 115. Yes. And uh, I'm going to be reading again from the Message Bible, modern day English. Mm -hmm. Easy, a uh, little kid can understand this Bible. Yes, I like that translation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't detract from the meaning of the word, but it's just said differently. Yes. You can. You don't have to go back and say, "Okay, what what did I just read?" Or what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. So let's start with verse one here, Psalm one fifteen. Not for our sake, God. No, not for our sake, but for your name's sake. Show your glory. <coughs> it's like nothing that we do, nothing that we say, nothing we're involved with, is for our glory. Amen. We do it all to the glory of God. Amen. We do it because we want him to be exalted. We want him to get the glory. Amen. Uh, and then continuing on, do it on account of your merciful love. Do it on account of your faithful ways. Do it so none of the nations can say, where now? Oh, where is their God? So he's, he's, he's confronting God and he's telling God, just do it. Do it based on your love. Do it for your glory's sake. Do it for your faithful ways. Do it so the nations cannot say, where is your God? Our God is in heaven doing whatever he wants to do. Our God is sovereign. He does whatever he wants to do, and whatever he wants to do is always right. It's always right. Always perfect. Mm -hmm. Always on time. He's never late, and he's never early. He is right on time. Yes. Amen. Even if we don't understand it, we have to trust that That's he right. knows what he's doing. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I saw someone yesterday in a video, and the video was going in slow motion. And the person was walking. But he was walking in slow motion. What came to me was, you know, sometimes we don't think that the things that we're praying for are happening soon enough. Yes. Like they're taking too long. But in actuality, it's God is ordering the times and the seasons, right? God is ordering your times. God is ordering your seasons. Your times are in his hands. It's just a matter of do we trust him? Do we trust him that he knows what he's doing and when he's doing it and how he's doing it? We need to trust. So we need to pray, God, help me trust you more with my times. Amen? Amen. Uh, our God is in heaven doing whatever he wants to do. Their gods are metal and wood, handmade in a basement shop, carved mouths that can't talk, painted eyes that can't see, tin ears that can't hear, molded noses that can't smell. What a mess. They can't do anything. Hands that can't grasp, feet that can't walk or run, throats that never utter a sound. Listen to this. Those who make them have become just like them. Wow. Have become just like the gods they trust. So the people that are making them, that rely on these gods, that trust in these gods, they, they're just like that. They can't see. They can't see past their own noses. They can't see the vision that God has for them. They can't see, uh, you know, two feet ahead of them. Mm -hmm. They're blinded to the spiritual ways, mm -hmm. to the ways of God. They can't see. They can't hear. That's a sad that's a sad situation to be in where you can't hear anybody talk, giving you good advice. You can't hear anybody giving you the word. Especially you can't even hear God. Amen. 
that's, you know, you're left to your own devices. So there's no direction, no wisdom, no understanding, just out there. Amen? But you, Israel, put your trust in God. Trust your helper. Trust your ruler. Clan of Aaron, trust in God. Trust your helper. Trust your ruler. You who fear God, trust in God. Trust your helper. Trust your ruler. Do you think God's trying to get a message over to us? To trust in God, to trust your helper, to trust your ruler. Any, I've seen anything that is in the word that he repeats. is He wants it to get down into our, our hearts, into our, our eyes, into our minds, into our souls, into our hearts to understand and grasp that concept to trust in God always. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. Amen. Sometimes, you know, we, we can, well, God has given us a mind to think. And, and it's good to think. It's good to ponder. But sometimes we have to really just trust God because no matter how much you think, you still can't figure it out. You still don't know what to do. So that's a time where we just have to trust him and put, place our times in his hands. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, remember us and bless us, oh, God. Bless the families of Israel and Aaron. Bless the families of Mary and, and uh, Sam and uh, Joe and everybody out there. That's what, Put your names in there. Oh, God, remember me. Say, remember me and bless me. Bless my family, oh, God. You got to make it personal, right, Vivian? Yes. You got to put it in, you know, personal. So that you can, that way you're taking it to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about Aaron and, and Israel. You're talking about you. Amen. Amen. And let God bless all who fear God. Bless the small and bless the great. Oh, let God enlarge your families, giving growth to you, growth to your children. Now, you may have like five kids, right? And you don't want any more kids. But <laughs> enlarge the ones you have. Enlarge their capacities to think. Enlarge their capacity to love God. Enlarge, uh, enlarge their, their vision, their purpose, right? You know that for the Israelite back then, to have seven sons mm -hmm. meant you had the perfect family. Wow. You could have daughters, but if you had seven sons, a that complete, was a perfect. Complete. So they had a lot of kids. <laughs> I don't know. They had a lot of kids. I don't know about that. I'm <laughs> I have four, and boy, that was enough, right? Oh, boy. But, uh, mm -hmm. Different so, lifestyle nowadays. Yes. You don't hear people having ten kids. No. Like they did. Really? Not, not that long ago, because like my uh, father, there were ten of them. Yeah, my mom, my mom's family, there were eight, four go girls, four boys. That's how much things have changed in the last mm -hmm. couple of decades. TV you know? came in. Yeah, TV came in, <laughs> work came. Now mom yes. and dad both have to both. work. Yes. So it's, it's expensive. Yes. Even though I know people that have like five kids mm -hmm. and more, and it's like, how do you know? I mean, they, they know the Lord, and you know how they do it, but it's like, how do they do it? You know, how mm -hmm. do you deal with all that many kids in one house, right? Yeah. But anyway, we're still, there's ways that God can enlarge us. Yes. There's ways that God can increase us. Amen. It says, may you be blessed by God. Now that's a complete blessing. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. May you be blessed by God, by God who made heaven and earth. The heaven of heavens is for God. But he put us in charge of the earth. I mean, your earth can be, you know, where you, where you live. Mm -hmm. that, that area from one corner of the property to the other. And you take care of that earth and you decorate it up. And you, you know, we worship God through our cleaning house. We worship God. We worship God by taking care of what he has given us. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Dead people can't praise you. Dead people can't praise God. 
Not a word to be heard from those buried in the ground. You know, we see, uh, we when we go out into the stores, we see a lot of people that kind of look kind of dead. Mm-hmm. They, they look sad. They look depressed. They look hurried. They look worried. Mm-hmm. They're existing. Yeah, they're, not, existing. they're not fully living. And, uh, I mean, there have been times that I've gone up to people, and it's not to glorify me. It's to, you know, God puts it in me, and I just go. And I go up to them, and I, can I give you a hug? I did that the other day. I went to the store. She does that. And I just love it. I love it because you feel, you know, the presence of God right there. Mm -hmm. And and people receive. You'd be surprised. How much people need God nowadays, how people need that touch from someone because they've never, maybe never have gotten a hug Mm -hmm. or maybe it's been a long time or maybe they live by themselves and don't fear, just be open to God. God, God is the one that uses you. You know, you can see the, the, the difference between a Christian Mm -hmm. and a non-Christian by their attitude, Yeah, but how they talk to you mm-hmm. the other day i went to eat breakfast with my son and my daughter and the lady that was you know the waitress she was just so happy mm-hmm. so joyful so polite mm-hmm. so that that immediately my spirit liked her yes connected I connected mm-hmm. with her mm-hmm. and then I, I can't remember what i said that she quoted a scripture and i said i knew it yeah. I knew it. She had to be Christian. Mm-hmm. And this is how we should be. Yes. People need to see a difference between us yes. and the world. What What is it that we carry? We carry life. Amen. We, we carry the light of Jesus. Amen. We carry hope because the hope is within us. Yes. So it's like this pastor used to say years ago, our pastor, when you go to somebody's house or you go to any place, your atmosphere changes. Yes. You're supposed to change the atmosphere with your presence. People that come to visit you, that come fearful, Mm -hmm. worried, depressed, Mm -hmm. they should leave your house in a totally different Mm -hmm. way of feeling. Yes. So when you look at yourself, excuse me, that's why I had to get up a couple of times because I'm having allergies and I was sneezing. When you visit somebody what do you leave behind amen more worry more stress arguments or do you leave the (laughs) peace that you carry amen we you are an atmosphere changer yes because of who walks with you amen 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 you know perfect love casts out all fear and and uh you know when we do something like that when we reach out to somebody we don't know, there there cannot be any fear there. Mm-hmm. Fear of maybe they're going to reject me or, you know, they're going to get mad at me. It's like, no, when you, when you have that urge in your spirit, man, to do something, do it with no fear, mm-hmm. knowing that God has a purpose. So I encourage you. I mean, all I do sometimes is just hug, hug them real tight and just walk mm-hmm. away. Or, you know, just say a greeting and just walk away because Mm -hmm. let God do his work. Amen. Amen. Okay. Dead people can't praise God. Not a word to be heard from those buried in the ground. But we bless God. Oh, yes. We bless him now. We bless him always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means a thousand praises to God. Amen. Amen. When it talked about their gods are metal and carved mouths that can't talk, it made me think of two of the commandments. It made me think of the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. And the second one is you shall not make for yourself a carved image, anything that is in heaven, on earth, or in the water under the earth. Nowadays, you know, some... some uh, some people are in this particular faith where they do uh, worship carved images. But we can make our own oh, images. Yes. We can, can make our own, own idols. idols. <laughs> you know, we got, you know, uh, people that are in the ministry 
need to be careful that they don't make the ministry their God. Yes. Very careful. You know, that give God the glory always for everything that happens in that church. Give God the glory. Never take the glory for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can put, you know, you can put uh, your family over God. Mm -hmm. You can put your job over God, seeking money over God. Amen? Amen. And it, when I speak of, of uh, over God, is, does, that take, does that take precedence over spending time with him? You know, uh, but uh, and and even so, those things are good. You know, going to the gym is good. Uh, spending time with family is good. There are things that that we do that are good. But when it gets to be too much, when it takes all the time away from from spending time with God, then there is a possible problem there. I, I measure it like this: like when when you go to bed at night, that you're in bed thinking about your day, mm -hmm. most of your day, what did you meditate on? Right. What did you spend most of your time, your efforts, your thoughts, your words on what? Mm -hmm. And you will see, was it godly things? Was it the Lord? Was it his word? Were you meditating on the word of God? Right. Were you meditating more on how to make money mm -hmm. and uh, whatever? Mm -hmm. This is how you can tell. Some people say, look at your checkbook and see where you spend all your yeah. money. Well, I, you know. Can't really. I can't really. But to me, it's like most of my day, I think about how did I start my day? You know, I always try to start my day thanking the Lord, mm -hmm. praying before I even go outside. And it doesn't stop there. It's throughout the day. You know, mm -hmm. Daniel, we read in the Bible, he read, th he prayed three times. Mm -hmm. And still the Jewish, in, uh, the, the believers in Israel, the Jewish people, they mm -hmm. do it. They pray three times a day. Now, you could do that, but me particularly, I don't do that. Yeah. I do it throughout the day. Right. And what is prayer? Talking to God mm -hmm. for any little thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for this. Oh, Lord, how would I do this? You know, it's an all-day relationship. Right, right. It's not just in the morning you get up and you do your duty, and then you forget yeah. about God the rest of the day. It's an, it's, it's an, it's, it's an intimate affair. It's a love affair yes. with your God. Amen. You know, when you remember when you first fell in love, that <laughs> puppy love? On the all phone day all long, the time. Thinking about the person <laughs> at night talking on the phone for hours and yeah. then you both falling asleep no you hang up no you hang up no you <laughs> hang up no you hang up and both of them falling asleep on the phone uh -huh. that type of love mm -hmm. man when you really get to know jesus when he becomes real to you you can't help mm -hmm. you can't just help thinking about it mm -hmm. meditating on him out of nowhere, I love you, Lord. Out right. of nowhere, and but there's so there's so much that you uh, that you come up with during the day uh -huh. that makes you think about Him. Yes, there's so many things. You know, just we walk around the store, just things. I mean, uh, even even He'll surprise you with something that you haven't even asked for, just something that He knows you like, mm -hmm. but you haven't asked for it, and all of a sudden you get it, and it's like, wow. You know, it's like, he's like a, I hate to, he's like a lover. He's lover of our souls. That's what the Bible says. He's, he's a lover, a lover of, our, of souls. our souls. He's our first love, mm -hmm. you know, and this is how, I mean, I can't talk like a man because I'm not a man, but as a woman, it's like, man, we love to be loved that way, right? We mm -hmm. love to just, you know, a, a husband, uh, a, a very good boyfriend, you know, just, all of a sudden come to us and give us this gift that we haven't even we haven't we haven't even spoken that we want it and yeah. that's how god is because god sees your heart you know he knows the deep things about you yeah and the theme of this psalm is to remind us that god is alive mm -hmm. and that he thinks about us and he takes yes. care of us yes the thing is what this is what we must ask ourselves every day mm -hmm. Is what I'm doing glorifying the Lord? Amen. Is what I'm doing pleasing to the Lord? 
is what I'm doing a good example for mm-hmm. whoever's watching me. Mm-hmm. We must constantly be measuring ourselves to what the Word of God says. Amen. Are we obeying what He said? Are we following? Because to me, there's a difference between believers and disciples. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Bible says that even the devil, the demons, believe mm-hmm. and tremble. Mm-hmm. They know Jesus. Oh, they know Jesus. Oh, yeah. They know the Bible from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. But they're not followers of Jesus. They're not disciples. Yeah. Disciple will let the teacher mold you and follow the instructions. You do it. Mm-hmm. So don't just be a believer. Be a disciple of the Lord Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, and you're going to see big changes in your life. Yes. I promise you, you're going to see big changes in your life. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, yes, and it's like, you know, love the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. It's like he desires that we love him with our whole heart, our whole strength, our whole mind, and our whole soul. That's that's the, because that's how he loves us. Yes. Amen. And, and uh, you know he he wants that from us. He doesn't force himself on you. He's very he's a gentleman. Amen. Amen. So love the lover of your soul today. Amen. Amen. Now tomorrow we'll be back with Psalm 116, and I we pray you enjoy your day. And love God. Yes. Ask him, uh, Lord, how, how can I get closer to you? Show me who you are. Reveal yourself to me, Lord. Pray. Pray that simple. He's listening. Amen. Amen. And well, remember, Jesus is Lord. Lord. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, friends. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>